and our esteemed chairpersons. Delighted to be here in this uh, August audience at the end of this exciting uh, NIC 2023. And uh, I'm presenting an enhanced chip PCI solutions for a failed PCI in an individual who had a stent failure, heavy residual calcium, left main bifurcation, and instant restenosis. 73-year-old gentleman, industrialist, social worker with multiple risk factors, teetotaler, in 2015 with left dominant coronary system calcified coronary artery disease then multivessel CAD in circumflex OM, LPDA and LAD stenting was done. There was a mention that he, the DES in the proximal LAD was uh, not well deployed and he was on uh, DAPD for 7 years without any MACE even still February 2022. Recurrence of uh, class 3 angina in presentation with a normal LV function in March 2022, angiogram was done elsewhere, showed a critical bifurcation, LM disease, a instant restenosis with heavy calcification, distal left main, osteal proximal LED, advised CABG surgery. He preferred a minimally invasive or robotic surgery or a repeat PCI, and three cardiothoracic surgeons were taken for CABG surgery. Did not consent once again for a CABG surgery. Went back, he wants to go back to the active life in three to four days' time. So he consented for a repeat chip PCI, understanding the scope of procedural challenges of a repeat PCI in an already failed PCI setting. So these are the baseline angiography. You could see an osteal circumflex, osteal LAD, and um, a significant amount of uh, dense calcium all along the left main, extending into the LAD, which is seen in the zoomed frame, and also the uh, mid-LAD stenosis, LPDA, and also the uh, OM stenosis. So these are the segments uh, involved in significant amount of calcific stenosis and the OM uh, instant restenosis. A baseline OCT was done, which showed a significant excitic calcific nodule dense thick in the left main, and also in the rest of the left main, there was 270% uh, uh, degree of arc of calcium, the LAD ostium. There was a deformed stand, underexpanded DES at the LAD ostium, and there was a calcific nodule in the proximal LAD, and the circumferential calcium of 360 degrees in this circumflex ostium. And this is the MSA of the previously underdeployed stand of 2.3 uh, millimeter square in the LAD ostium. So chip PCI was done with an access from right radial artery, 6F EBO guide catheter, temporary pacing on standby, all-star wire in the LAD, whisper extra support guide wire in the circumflex, and then osteal circumflex and was dilated with a 2.5 NC balloon. Distal OM was uh, prepared with a same 2.5 balloon, and then a magic touch, a serolimus drug eluting balloon was applied to the instant restaurants of the OM with a 3 into 25, and there was an optimal results of the instant restenosis of the distal OM instant restenosis. Subsequently, 2.5 pre-dilatation was done for the instant restenosis of the LPDA, and again a 2.5 magic touch balloon was done for the LPDA, and an optimal results was obtained for the instant restenosis of the LPDA, and this was the appropriately uh, results after the circumflex, as well as the LPDA and OM stenosis uh, instant restenosis with the DEB-PCI. And then I address the mid LAD with a pre dilatation of 2.25 into NC balloon. And then the same balloon was applied to the ostium because of the profile. I introduced it to the distal lesion preparation. And then the osteal LAD was also prepared with a 2.5 NC. And the regulating balloon was given for 2.535 zero limus magic touch to the mid LAD. And then it was well optimally prepared. So now comes the preparation of the LM brightification. You could see a 3.512 shockwave lithotripsy was applied. And despite the five cycles of application, you could still see a waste remaining there. And uh, that was the waste there after five cycles. The same three cycles of the shockwave 3.5 balloon was applied to the osteal circumflex, which was post-dilated with the OPN NC because the vessel was measuring 4 mm, and that was optimally dilated after the shockwave, the circumflex ostium. And then I took a 4 into 12 shockwave, where the waste disappears at the LM as well as the LAD, which was a 4 mm. And more pulses will give us certainly a greater luminal gain with an appropriate uh, uh, modification of the dense calcification at the LM as well as ostium. And then the, you could see uh, the multiple cycles were applied and uh, there was an appropriate uh, preparation of the calcium. And this is the IVL application to the uh, LM. And there was one cycle remaining. I got into the circumflex with the guide extension catheter, 4 mm, already opened a high profile shockwave lithotripsy balloon, which was applied. And then you could see a well-prepared uh, LM ostium as well as the circumflex ostium and LAD ostium stent. And then a Q-alert standing was done with a 416 synergy from left main to circumflex, which was optimized. And then a 4 into 20 into the LM to LAD. First case was done. And then a pot was done. And then you could see a, an optimal results, which was uh, well, well satisfying. And these are the images uh, before and after. Very, very optimal results for a repeat revascularization, very complex scenario 
with an, with an under expanded stent. The post uh, LM PCI, these are the OCT images after 16 cycles of shockwave lithotripsy and accurate stenting. LED ostium MSA was 11.6 from 2.2, and the polygon of confluence, you could see the circumflex in the figure of eight. The QLET, uh, uh, circumflex MSA was 11.9, QLET, um, post QLET LM MSA was 12.5. So these are, these are some of the literature's reviews of a 70 patients in the coronary lithotripsy as a modality for treating underexpanded stents in a multi-center crunch registry. And Zia Dali's uh, intravascular lithotripsy treatment for underexpanded stent secondary to severe coronary calcification. And then the IVL Dragon registry, which was presenting 62 patients uh, in, published in 2022 with intravascular lithotripsy for the straight treatment of in, stent under expansions. The analysis of all these seeds show shockwave intravascular lithotripsy used to manage underexpanded stent. IVL proved to be an effective bailout and safe option for facilitating optimal stent expansion and increasing the luminal gain. Ladies and gentlemen, enhanced PCI solutions for a failed PCI with the novel technologies like intravascular shockwave lithotripsy, multiple applications when necessary of shockwave lithotripsy along with a drug-coded balloon PCI can give a high procedural success for a repeat chip PCI solution for a previous stent failure and focal instant restenosis. Previous stent implant could buffer the sonic waves because of the metal interface and could reduce the impact of the shock on the underlying suboptimally prepared calcification. It will require additional long cycles of shockwave lithotripsy application to the select segments. Shockwave lithotripsy sometimes obviates the need for atherectomy in a previously underexpanded stent in the current scenario of technology involvement. Current advanced technologies enhance the success of chip PCI in many failed PCI scenarios, especially with increasing patient population are choosing repeat PCI for a repeat revascularization. So interventional cardiologists, I should say, that need to be abreast with the various use of present techniques and tips of application of the novel technologies to provide the best satisfactory successful outcome for repeat revascularization in a previously failed uh, instant restenosis and also under expanded stent and also to match the patient's desire. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so uh, Manoj, how about the option of open high pressure balloon? Open I, NC. I think there was a significant dense calcification, and I'm not sure whether open NC with a stent uh, under expanded with an underlying uh, unmodified thick calcium would be giving us such optimal results. And we certainly had to modify the compliance of the vessel there yeah. for doing a left main PCI. So that was my thought. So uh, my question is very simple: that when you use a IVL balloon and deliver your shocks, and you use opian balloon, you go up to 50 bars. With this, how many bars up you go? I think it's a, it's, the shock wave is just for a moment, it applies a 40 atmosphere, it's not a sustained pressure. Ah. In opian NC, it's a sustained pressure, ah. and the sustained pressure exerted by the IVL is just four atmospheres. Do you have access to laser in your lab? Laser. These are two instant severe instant restenosis. Why not? So laging them first and then use the IVL to expand this unexpanded stent. Laser would have, you know, that... Uh, laser, yeah. I think laser uh, is a consideration, but uh, uh, laser is unlikely to modify significantly to the extent that IVL can modify the heavy calcium. You might, uh, if there is a, a, a passage there, so you don't have to create a passage because of the, uh, the laser, and the balloons could go through that, and therefore I didn't consider that as an option. How about the dual antiplatelet treatment for this patient? What did you advise to the patient and the patient, for how long? Since the patient presented with NSTEMI and there's multiple stents and repeat revascularization, this is about 15 months of follow-up. He's doing well, so he's still on DAPT. And now he's on 60 milligram BD of ticagrelor and aspirin. Yeah, so he would a need data. a longer period of uh, extended yeah, period. There's data to support uh, if the bleeding risk is low. Yes. They can, uh, two years of dual antiplatelet uh, is better in these patients. Thank you. You applied IVL only to the LM bifurcation, even to the distal portion of the stent. I saw the pictures where you applied only NC followed by DCB. Am I right? No, I distal think the DCB the was stand. only to the distal OM restenosis and LPDA restenosis. The proximal left main LAD underexpanded stent and circumflex ostium, which had a dense calcification, circumferential calcification, calcific nodule, the IVL were applied but to But there is a one uh, recent study. That is a ZR4. When you are doing the ISR, the distal portion always use the cutting balloon bell, bell. or angioscalp. The restenosis, once you apply the DEB, they compared NC versus angioscalp. 
the results are far, far better. Almost 40% reduction in the base rate. So definitely I would prefer the distal portion should be treated with the angioscalp, pragmally, IVL. That's fine. Thank you.